Well, this is just great. What did you say your name was? Well, now that you mention it, no one ever told me. But I thought perhaps you might know it. No, I don't know it. We've only just met, you see, and... Well, perhaps you have some sort of identification in your pockets. But I haven't any pockets. You see, this is just me. But I am expecting some mail. That should have my name on it. Well, let's just sit here on the porch and wait for the mailman. And the two sat patiently on the stoop and waited eagerly for the mailman's delivery. It wasn't long before they heard the rumble of the mail truck and the sound of the postman's whistle. Beanie ran to the mailbox as the little rhino scampered right at her heels. Beanie pushed aside the envelopes and magazines until she found what she was looking for. Here it is. Reinhard P. Rhino. It's from a publishing house. Reinhard P. Rhino. That's a nice name, isn't it? A very nice name, especially for a rhino. But it's a little formal, don't you think? Why don't you just call me Reinhardt for short? Okay, Reinhardt, it's a deal. Uh, one other thing, though. It says here you could be a winner. That's okay. I already am. And the two gathered up all the mail and carried it into the house. Beanie took care of Reinhardt all by herself. But she had to hide him in her room most of the time so her parents wouldn't find out about him. This is the best home I've ever had, Reinhardt would say as Beanie tucked him into bed. And you're the best pet a kid ever had, she would answer. When Beanie McGee's dad and stepmom were out of the house, Reinhardt would come out of Beanie's room. He was always excited to explore the house, but he never strayed far from Beanie's sight. They were ever so happy together. As time went on, Reinhardt began to grow and grow and grow until he was even bigger than a grown man. How am I ever going to hide you now, Reinhardt? You've become the biggest baby rhino in the world. Um, perhaps if you covered me with blankets, I will be less noticeable. But when she did, he was not only noticeable, he also looked quite silly. Reinhardt was very worried. He worried and fretted and pondered and puzzled so much that one morning, he didn't even notice that he sat himself down for his morning cup of coffee right next to Beanie McGee's father. Unfortunately, Beanie's father noticed Reinhardt. Help! Everybody! There's a dinosaur in the kitchen! I'm not a dinosaur. I'm losing my mind. Susan, come quick. There's a talking dinosaur tearing up the kitchen. Beanie and her stepmother arrived at the same time. Daddy, he's not a dinosaur. Are you tearing up my kitchen? No, ma'am, but I... Susan, call the police. Call the army. David, settle down. He hasn't hurt my kitchen. Daddy, please. He's not a dinosaur. He's a rhinoceros. And he's my rhinoceros. And you can't call the police in the army, because if he goes, I go. All right, young lady. You can both stay under one condition. This prehistoric-looking fellow has to learn to perform some household duty in the next three days, or out he goes, and that's final. And off they went to teach Reinhardt a household chore. We'll find you a job on the first day, said Beanie McGee, as she led Reinhardt into the kitchen. This is a simple chore, which in time I think you may learn to enjoy. It's called washing the dishes. So in the next couple of hours, Beanie McGee carefully explained everything Reinhardt needed to know about washing the dishes. And everything went very smoothly until it came time for Reinhardt to try it himself. Every time he tried to pick up a plate, he would drop it on the floor, smashing it to pieces. Wait! You've got to stop! We're running out of plates. What seems to be the problem? Sorry, said Reinhardt with an embarrassed grin. No thumbs. Early the next morning, Beanie McGee woke Reinhardt. I've got it, she cried. Rhinos are basically outdoor creatures, so it's only natural that you should do something outside. Like washing the dishes outside, he questioned. No, 
like mowing the lawn. Oh, yeah, that's perfect, said Reinhardt. But how do you mow the lawn? Beanie McGee took him out to the backyard and showed him every detail of mowing the lawn. When she was absolutely sure that he could handle his new duties, she went off to finish her own chores. After a short time, Beanie realized she no longer heard the clipping of the shears or the hum of the mower coming from the backyard. And when she looked, she saw Reinhardt munching away at her mother's gulchenberry bushes and Patagonia blossoms. Reinhardt, what are you doing? Well, I was browsing in the shrubbery, he said with his mouth full. You can't browse in the shrubbery, or my mother will surely make you leave. Uh, but Patagonia bushes are a favorite snack for rhinos. Well, then perhaps we should find you a less tasty chore. The next day was the third and last day for Reinhardt to find a chore. Neither he nor Beanie McGee could think of a single thing that the rhino could do. They thought and thought and thought until finally... The car, said Reinhardt excitedly. What about it? asked Beanie McGee. I'll fix it, answered the rhino. I don't think it's broken. And besides, my father doesn't let anyone touch his car. And sometimes even he's not allowed to touch it. Well, well, well. We'll just have to surprise him, Reinhardt said as they hurried off to the garage. It was only a matter of minutes before Reinhardt got all the wires and belts and gizmos in the engine so mixed up that the car began to make a horrible noise. It frightened him so much that he jumped back and got his horn caught in the hood of the car. I thought you knew a lot about cars, said Beanie McGee. I do, but only about the outside. Beanie's father was furious. That's it, he screamed. Tomorrow I want you to pack up and go back to wherever it is you came from. This time they knew he meant it.